Freedom doesn't pay the bills, but freedom does pay your health, your wellness, your overall well-being, these most incredible dividends. And then when you get that and when you are growing, when you are feeling fulfilled, you're able to show up differently. You're able to reach out to clients. You're able to make those proposals from that place of alignment. And then that's when things start happening and that's when the money comes in. What's up, nurses and nurse coaches? Welcome back to the Nurse Coach Collective podcast. Heather here. And joining me today is nurse coach Karina Hammond. Karina, welcome. Thank you. All right. Let me tell you about this amazing nurse coach. Karina is a transformative nurse coach and nurse practitioner on a mission to empower women to break free from their reliance on food and alcohol. Her expertise guides clients towards liberation from these coping mechanisms, fostering a life of true freedom and wellness. Now, success is not all about money, but Karina earned more than $14,000 as a coach prior to even graduating from the Nurse Coach Collective. So Karina, I am so excited to have you here and to dive into all of this and hopefully more. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here with you, Heather. Yeah, so I think we have so much good stuff that we can cover here. I know that there's going to be a lot about your professional practice, how you have brought in nurse coaching into your role as a nurse practitioner, the coaching groups that you've created, and we will get to all of that. But you mentioned wanting to also really dive into your story of personal growth and personal development. And I was thinking maybe that would be a nice place to start because I'm going to venture to guess that that might have something to do with where you ended up going professionally. I've been practicing as a nurse practitioner for 10 years. And prior to that, I was a cardiac nurse. COVID, you know, it it put a strain on the medical profession for sure. And what happened to me personally was in 2022, uh, there was a lot of changes. I got married and then a very good friend of mine passed away from breast cancer. And she was 32 and it was a, a pretty rough battle and she was an RN and my scuba diving partner. And at her funeral, it was in April of 2022, I was drinking heavily. And I think a lot of nurses use alcohol as a coping mechanism. It was a common thread in my group of nurses anyways. And in that moment, after that funeral, I realized something had to shift in my life. And I I didn't know what that was. And um, I started listening to podcasts on alcohol consumption and how can you decrease your alcohol consumption. And I found coaching and I, I'm like, what is this coaching? And this this woman who's coaching wasn't in healthcare. And I was like, but I like kind of coach people anyways. I'm a nurse practitioner. They come for me, come to me, you know, for assistance and all this stuff. So I was like, I could be a coach. I could totally be a coach. And then I found the collective. So that was in June. And I had successfully shifted my relationship with alcohol at that point. Now fast forward, we're a year and a half in, and it's it's just a, it's not even a thing anymore. But that's where the journey started into the collective. And I was burnt out. I, and I'm, I'm currently working one day a week, which is such a beautiful thing because I love my one day a week as a nurse practitioner. So it makes that role. I, I'm, I'm more full time. I have made more money as a coach this year than I have made in my one day a week, you know, PRN job as a nurse practitioner. In the collective, I learned about coaching, but really I, uh, the transformative coaching, like that was not a term that I knew. Um, and I went plant-based thanks to you and Peter. Again, wasn't Congratulations. even on my, <laughs> thank you. Wasn't even on my radar, but I remember listening to it in September of last year, we were going through those modules. And I said to my husband, if I'm going to be a wellness coach or if I'm going to be teaching people about lifestyle medicine as a coach, we're going to have to make some changes. And our refrigerator is full of eggs and chicken and all the, you know, lean, healthy proteins. And I didn't even know where to start, but I just kind of cleaned it out and started with fruits and vegetables. We felt great. My husband has psoriatic arthritis. So I was like, this can only benefit you. His joints, like within two weeks, it was like, all right, well, this is a thing. So now again, it's been a gear for plant-based eating. Of course, there's little side steps as you're learning. Um, but so my life has just shifted so drastically and the transformations just keep coming and, and rolling. And this practice as a coach just has helped me grow so much deeper. And I got into a little bit of a place the other day where 
it, there was a sense of fear of, I can't go back. And sometimes you lose your path forward. It, it's just this part of this transformation thing that I never knew existed. And I'm just really grateful for you and Peter creating something for our nurses. Like, I'm sure I'm not the only person that has had no idea, uh, you know, what coaching was. And um, inherently, I think nurses are set up for this type of work. So that that is my personal growth story in the past year and a half. Yeah, and that's so much. I mean, okay, so you're talking about totally reshaping your relationship with alcohol, which good for you for realizing that that was, you know, a coping mechanism that you were using. I think so many of us nurses have our own stories and journeys with that, and it can take a really long time to realize like, hmm, Maybe this isn't the best way to cope after a rough shift. Maybe this is something that I need to do some self-work on. Um, you completely reshaped not only yours, but your husband's relationship with food. I mean, this is fascinating. And saw those direct impacts to give you that feedback of like, okay, I'm doing something right. This is working. This is worth going through the hard parts of making these major lifestyle changes. And then on top of that, building up your business so that your primary you're are you in primary care as a nurse practitioner yes. family nurse practitioner okay yeah family so nurse that has become that has become like your side hustle almost it's my while side your gig. while your nurse coaching has stepped right into the forefront which sounds like is exactly where you wanted it in order to focus on healing and lifestyle and prevention in the way that spoke to you that's awesome <laughs> i, I want to say it's been great because it has been great and and there's also all of the uh the pitfalls that come along with this type of personal growth you know, but it, it's all good. Tell me about that. What do you mean by that? I think when you're used to doing something like just society, you know, we're, we go to work, we clock in, we we do the job, we make a salary, we um, put towards our 401k, like these these things that we just do. And there's a safety and a knowing. And then when you pull the plug on the safety and the knowing and you start following intuition, there are some scary paths that you get on and 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 very often times i felt like what have i done like nothing was really <laughs> wrong right? nothing was really wrong but when i said i can't go back like i don't want to go back now i know too much i feel too good so that that's what i mean by pitfalls you do get on some dark paths uh, of self-trust because you don't know where you're going yeah well breaking out of the status quo is never easy Right. I think so many nurses have, have experienced that, like even if there's something that we are dissatisfied with or we're craving something more, more personal wellness, more fulfillment, it is hard to break out of the box when the box is the only thing that we know and when the box does provide a certain level of safety and stability. So what has helped you and supported you to gain momentum, keep momentum through those times that felt more challenging or felt a little murkier? I have... Um peer coaches who I've stayed in contact with. And so we rely on each other because um, you you hit the same walls in, in different forms. So having other people to relate to and just having my own coach who believes in me so fully and so strongly and reminds me that like I can also believe in myself fully and strongly. And that's really where a lot of the work is. There's just a knowing, Heather, that like th that this is a this is the path right this is the path um i don't know where it's going but i know it's like it i don't want to get off it trust trusting yourself trusting your gut trusting your intuition and you know we talk about this inside of the nurse coach collective is like trusting the process being unattached to the outcome right you can have this idea and this goal of where you want to go but we never really know where the journey is going to take us but when you can trust it and lean into those places where you're getting positive feedback right your body is feeling better when you change your relationship with food your mental emotional well-being is feeling better when you change your relationship with alcohol when you step into this totally different way of practicing nursing and being a nurse practitioner in the lens of nurse coaching, you trust how that feels and you trust the rightness. I think this is um, this is a really honest portrayal, Karina, of what it's like to step into something new and different, right? It's not all easy and butterflies and roses and 14K months, but sometimes it is. And then you celebrate that. And the rest of the time you work really, really hard to keep making that forward progress. Yeah. Yeah. And you still get to help people 
I, I mean, I just know I was put on earth to help people. That's the one thing I know. I, I know that I've always been in a caretaking role and I still get to do that. Like I still get to support people in a different way. Um, so that part of me is fulfilled. And that's like most important. You know for sure that you were put on this earth to help people. And I imagine that's why you got into nursing. I imagine that's what pushed you further into becoming a nurse practitioner. So how would you say that becoming a nurse coach has enhanced your role as a nurse practitioner and and enhanced your ability to serve people and help people? It's interesting because people, uh, my patients definitely feel seen and heard more than they ever did before. A lot more tears, a lot more stories that normally, you know, my listening, my ability to sit there and really connect with patients. And because I'm only doing it one day a week, I make the time. I'm late. I'm just always late. And whereas before (laughs) it was like this high stress of I'm always late and then the next day and then the next day and then the next day and endless documentation. And, And now it's one day of that. And so I get to go in and sit and really listen my skills as a nurse practitioner have completely shifted and I see that in the way that they interact with me because I had a, a wall up like there's just no time for this let's get to the point you know what I mean so now I sit and I listen and I give them time because that's what people need people need to be heard and they need to be seen and I I get to bring this skill into practice and like I said the beautiful thing is that I make time for it now because it isn't a Monday through Friday thing. It isn't a 40 hour or 60 hour week, let's be honest, you know, thing. We get to connect with a lot of nurse practitioners and we also get to connect with a lot of nurses who are on that sort of precipice where they're figuring out what's coming next. And so is it gonna be nurse coaching or is it gonna be (laughs) becoming a nurse practitioner? And in that kind of gray area, I think something that really I have heard from so many nurse practitioners, and maybe this is, true for you is sort of like you said, we get into this field because we want to help people and then choosing to pursue a nurse practitioner so that you can have an advanced scope. You can help people even deeper, but then finding that you've put in all of this time and energy and resources into advancing your degree, advancing your scope of practice and almost getting to this point where you sort of feel a little bit stuck because even though you're coming at it from the nursing model, you're still expected to be diagnosing, taking the pharmaceutical approach, doing a lot of prescribing. And there isn't necessarily, unless you gain additional skills like nurse coaching, there isn't necessarily that time and space to be taking that preventative approach. Am I kind of touching on what your experience has been like? This is this is what I've heard from so many other MPs. Yeah, definitely. So um, prescribing hypertension medications, high cholesterol medications, and having no time to sit down and explain how plant-based eating might benefit. Give it a, give it a go for a month and then let's redraw labs. You know, that, that's not realistic in the current healthcare model. It just simply isn't. And that was not in alignment with what I knew and how I lived. Like even before I lived a very healthy lifestyle, it's just shifted, you know? But no, there isn't there isn't time when you're seeing patients every 10 minutes to provide them the support that they need to be successful in lifestyle changes. You say it, you send them out the door. Maybe you give them a handout, right? Like, like that's not support. That's not support. Nope, but that is the typical healthcare model that we all know, unfortunately, a little bit too well. So yeah, okay. And so what I think is fascinating about the way that nurse coaching and being a nurse practitioner can play together is that there are just a total variety of ways you can do it. I mean, we've had nurse practitioners enter into this field and they've chosen after becoming a nurse coach, I don't want to be an MP anymore. I I don't want to do the diagnosing and prescribing. I want to lean more heavily on the coaching. We have found nurse practitioners come through the program and be like, I am so stoked that I have my MP license because now I get to be that MP who does things differently and takes the coaching angle. We have found, you know, every combination of this. So where do you sit? Because you're, you have your MP practice one day a week privately, but then you've also got this nurse coaching side of things, but you're still keeping that MP right in the title, right? Your, your business name with your coaching is the mindful MP, right? Yeah. The mindful nurse practitioner. Yeah. Yeah. So, so tell me about that side of things. 
I think that in general, the nursing industry is a trusted industry. People trust nurses. I know we're losing trust, but I think that's because we're in healthcare. We're losing trust. I feel like the general population, I hope. Anyways, I don't know. People like nurse practitioners. My patients have always liked and trusted me. So, and I am like, I have worked for that. And I'm going to be honest, it's an easy job for me now. I have 10 years of experience. Now, if you would have rolled back to year one, it was horrible. It was terrible. The learning curve and the responsibility that comes with diagnosing, treating, misdiagnosing, mistreating, right? The wrong antibiotics, whatever it is, like the first few years, they, no wonder I was drinking is like, I get it. Like I get why people have coping mechanisms. It's the trust that people are like, oh, she has experience. She's a nurse practitioner. And in general, people trust nurse practitioners. And and like I said, that's where it was. I do resonate with that role because I've been in it for so long. So I didn't want to just be like, well, I'm a coach. I am a coach and I think I'm a good coach and I'm a nurse practitioner and I think I'm a good nurse practitioner. I'm an excellent nurse practitioner. So I wasn't ready to leave the role. And when I am ready to leave the role, if that role no longer serves me, which it was starting to at full time, it was it was past not serving me. But I found a balance now where I can still do something that I love and then do coaching, which I also love. They are integrated beautifully in my world. Tell me more about what it looks like to integrate these two roles. Tell me more about the coaching that you do, the program that you run. What does the whole nurse coach side of your life look like, Karina? I started a program called Becoming the Mindful Eater. And really what happened was I wanted a program called Becoming a Mindful Drinker. And I had a hard time. People, there's a stigma around drinking. Like you're either an alcoholic and you go to AA or you aren't an alcoholic and you don't have a problem. And I think there's a gray area of where is it affecting your life and how do you want to shift it? For, like for me, not saying that there aren't people who are addicted. So I saw this gray area because I lived in it. I had a really hard time having people show up to workshops, having people would side message me questions, but nobody wanted to get into a setting and really talk about it. And food was my other, it's always been, food has always been something that I've struggled with my relationship with food. And since I had changed my relationship with food into a plant-based eating and, and knew that I could come from an angle of weight loss, hypertension, high cholesterol, why don't I design a program around mindful eating? And it was a much easier sell because it's okay to talk about weight. But I found a stigma around talking about drinking. People weren't interested in shining lights on those dark places, but people are used to shining lights on the topic of eating. But I, I kind of trick people because what I really want to do is deep dive coaching. So I get women into these groups who are ready to lose weight and change their relationship with food. And I teach them about journaling. I te teach them meditation and quiet reflection so that they can find their root causes. And then when we talk about root causes, people don't even know what this is, right? And then I, I get to coach. And so I, I use the facade of food because uh, people are willing, their brains can get wrapped around that. And then they come into these vulnerable spaces and um, yeah, I start teaching about meditation. And they know that, like we get on consult calls, I'm like, here's what we're gonna learn each week. So, you know, do I get some no's and people who aren't in alignment? Sure. You know, they aren't they aren't paying for the group. But for the most part, um, people are ready for it. The word mindfulness is a bu buzzword, but I think people have a general idea of what it is. And then, you know, mindful eating with the mindful nurse practitioner. So that that's it just is now we're starting the fourth group here next week. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, this is so cool. And it's did you have any business background before you dove into this? I got a bachelor's degree in marketing. I worked for an agency uh, that hired me out of college when I was 22 for my internship. They just hired me for the summer and I was like, I was supposed to be a nurse. And my parents were like, you better go back now. Like, so, you know, I just re-entered nursing, the nursing field at, at 23. And, um, but so I have this whole degree and, and I understand it's beautiful, honestly, Heather, because forever I was like, well, that's a waste of a degree. That was a w And here I am utilizing those skills that are just inherent. Yes, that's like a full circle moment. And and so the reason why I asked, not because you need to have a background in business or marketing to get into 
business as a nurse coach. In fact, I'd say most nurses who do become nurse coach entrepreneurs have zero business or marketing background. But as I'm listening to you tell your story, it's like you had this very keen awareness of language, which let's be real, marketing, really, that's what it is. It's language, it's storytelling, it's being able to speak to your people and recognizing, here's what I want to do. I have this concept of how I want to serve and support people. And if I word it in this way, it's not landing, but what can I tweak so that it's really going to land? And then you you said that, well, I kind of trick people to get in the door, but what are you really saying there? You're tricking people is finding the best way to really serve and support them and go deep. Peter and I say this all the time about the Nurse Coach Collective. We say, well, we kind of trick nurses into the self-growth, right? We we tell you what we know you're going to be open to, which is the professional growth, right? Become a board certified nurse coach, get your contact hours. But along the way, we trick you. No, we don't. We lovingly welcome you in, but we trick you into the personal growth, which goes along along the way and is such an integral part. So I hear some of those same patterns and strategies, Karina, being implemented into your practice. Nobody's been upset yet. So there's been fi- there's been 15 women this year. I started the program this year. There's been 15 women and not a single one of them have been like, yeah, I thought this was going to be a diet. You know, like that's, none of them have been upset. No, most people are not upset when they experience the power of nurse coaching. Most people are very excited, very intrigued, very transformed and finding out when's the next program that I can enroll in, right? When's the next session? Sign me up. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, okay. That's a lot of women that you've already been able to work with and serve and support. You said meditation, mindfulness, journaling, plant-based eating. What else happens inside of these groups do you think that really makes them such a powerful space for your clients? The first, they're 90 minutes uh, once a week for eight weeks. And one week, week five, they get a one-on-one coaching session with me instead of meeting as a group. So they get to deep dive. But the first hour of the 90 minutes is coaching. And then the last half hour, we go over whatever topic we're going to go over, whether it's the gut microbiome or plant-based eating or, or whatever it is. I give education on the back half. And then each call in the beginning is, uh, what are we going to celebrate? And and where are you having setbacks? Where do you need support to move forward with your eating or these changes? People are really resistant to meditation and they're really resistant to journaling. I would say 90% of the time that my, inter- my I'm introducing them to this. So having support around this, why, why are you, what, what is it that's coming up that makes you not make time for this simple activity of journaling? And it's not around food. It's you know, general, general. So um, it's so special. I, I've got to say, like, it lights me up. It is such a sacred space that I create for these women. It's just awesome. It's different. It's different than, I mean, I created it. So like, of course, it's unique. I can feel it. I can feel like this peace that waves over you of like, um, it's peace, it's calm, but it, it looks like just fulfillment, just like this is what I created. This is the impact that I'm having. I'm seeing the results in these women that I get to serve and support. And, you know, if I can be bold here and you can absolutely correct me if I'm wrong, but in a lot of ways, it seems like these women who you get to serve and support are you, like they're versions of yourself or of your past self. And and I imagine that part of this practice that you now have must also feel incredibly healing to be able to work with these past versions of yourself in so many ways. When I started it, I wasn't healed and I'm still not. I still have these thoughts with food and overeating more than anything. It was one of those things where you've heard everywhere, like you don't have to be 100% healed to help other people, to support other people. And this program has helped me in my own journey so greatly so yes past versions for sure i'm many steps ahead but it's still helping my my healing process as far as food is concerned just so much yo-yo dieting and so much body image issue those things don't go away with a little bit of journaling and meditation that is my pain point that is my pain teacher Um, alcohol wasn't as hard as i thought it was going to be food is food's a thing Yeah, that's fascinating because I think something that a lot of nurses wonder when they're getting into the field of nurse coaching is like, do I have to have 
all of my own shit together in order to be able to be a nurse coach, right? Do I have to have all of my stuff wrapped up with a perfect little bow? Do I need to be the perfect picture of health in order to serve and support others on their journey? And so what you're saying is not only no, you don't have to have it all together, but also the reminder that you are going to be always working on your journey even as you're supporting your clients and the work that you get to do in these groups with these women is also coming back to be like your continued evolution of growth. They really appreciate the vulnerability. The first two growth groups, I showed up as like the leader of the group. And with the third group, I started integrating and being more vulnerable with them and dropping them messages in the group chat, telling them about my day and my experiences. They really enjoyed that connection. So if anything, my vulnerability and honesty of where my setbacks were, you know, with food made them realize like, oh, wow, like she doesn't have it all figured out. We don't have it all figured out, you know? So yeah, you don't have to have it all figured out. You just have to be, you know, enough steps ahead that you can you can help out those who are coming behind you. Karina, and I and I really appreciate you saying that because I think like we have this tendency to believe that our leaders, our mentors, our coaches, our nurse practitioners are supposed to be these idols that we put up on pedestals. But like you and I know, and most of the nursing and nurse coaching world know that the you know dirty little secret about nursing is that we are statistically speaking more unhealthy than the average American, and that's really not good looking at the health of the average American. So I think the fact that you are now in a role as a nurse coach that you're able to show up as your human self and as your authentic self, that that is going to be just inevitably so powerful, so humanizing for the people that you get to serve. Yeah, you do. thank you. Thank you for saying that. That felt just on point. And I don't remember that I used to get to be my authentic self in this way. Uh, when I was working at the bedside in the ICU. Like, I don't remember getting to go into a patient room and having those types of conversations. It was very much, you know, I I dress the part, I wore my hair a certain way, I'm showing up, and there's there's no me in the equation because it's all about that person and mostly all about titrating the medications and getting them out the door as fast as possible. I imagine probably you had similar moments in your in your previous nursing and nurse practitioner life. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there was no time to be authentic. There was no time time to be authentic. Like there just there wasn't. You had a job to do. You did it. It's a different ball game. Um, co- coaching is just can't believe two years ago I didn't even know what it was. That's weird. And now it's like you know I have a business in coaching. And okay, I gotta pull out one more thing from what you shared before. You talking you're talking about how like nutrition and diet and food and I think exercise too fits into that are almost like the socially accepted things that we are willing to talk about. Our clients are willing to come in the door and be like, I would like to talk about diet and exercise. Please help me with that. And within the Nurse Coach Collective, we often say like, diet and exercise, those are the gateway. Those are the gateway topics to really deep and powerful coaching. And sometimes you have to take what you can get, right? You have to take whatever the person is willing to say, like, hey, I'm, I'm ready to work on this. And that's where you start. You meet the person where they're at. And then the more you talk about food and the more you start to uncover and the more you get to those root causes, as you were saying, that's when we get to peel back those layers and find out what's really going on. And maybe then we start focusing on the emotional, the spiritual, whatever the other challenges that are really keeping someone trapped in their cycle or in their boxes. Yeah. And some people aren't aren't ready. I, I had a gentleman who just wasn't like it was trans. You know, there's a difference between transactional coaching and transformational coaching. And I really am digging on the transformational coaching. And somebody hired me to lose weight. And he um, he was only capable of transactional coaching. And I, I really tried to lead him down the path. And you know, you meet people where they are. But six months in, and much success, I was like, we have to go to a different level here. We're just talking about diet and exercise, diet and plant-based eating and blah, blah, blah we couldn't even talk about the relationship with his wife, his children, like he he had a wall up. So it doesn't always work that way. But that was one case 
where I, I met him where he was to the point of uh, as much success, I still think he's going to come back around into my life. I think he needs a pause. But yes, exactly what you just said. Uh, people, we, they come into my space, they start to trust me based on this education that I'm providing. And then we start to peel back the layers. So yeah, and and nurses are good at that. We're good listeners. Um, yeah, nurses are good listeners and nurse coaches are excellent listeners. <laughs> we are indeed. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, Karina, this is so, so cool to hear about all of these different aspects. And it's clear to me that success comes in many different forms for you, right? Stepping into a way of practicing that really lights you up, inspires you, you know you're having an impact both in your family nurse practitioner role and also here in your coaching circles and your coaching groups with these women. But I do wanna talk about money a little bit because this is something that nurse coaches really love to hear about. And one of the biggest fears that I think so many nurses and new nurse coaches have is, are people really gonna pay for this? Can I really earn money as a nurse coach. And so, yes, I dropped this really exciting thing in your intro, which is that you were somebody who walked away able to earn $14,000 through your coaching before you even graduated from the Nurse Coach Collective. So I would love to hear more about that. And then I'd also love to hear about like, let's talk pricing. You know, how do you set up your coaching packages and and what are people really willing to pay you for these services? Absolutely. I, my mentor at the time when I graduated, I hadn't added up my, I hadn't added it up and I did. And I, I let my mentor know and she was like, I'm pretty sure that's a record. And I was like, really, that's cool. So Yes, we had to do, was it four or six? I forget how many pro bono people we had to do or hours, but I presented to four, we'll say four, I forget. So two out of the four, you know, accepted my back end offer after the pro bono hours. And I had a coach at the time that I paid $3,000 for three months. So I was like, eh, she's got some experience, but I'm a nurse practitioner. So I'm going to charge $2,600 to these pro bono clients and they both paid me $2,600. So I'm still in the collective and I'm I'm making that. And then there was a bit of a lull. I, I couldn't really believe, I saved my first check and then I went back after we were done and I let her know. I was like, do you know you were my first paid client? She was so excited and like so happy. I didn't tell her at the time. And then December of last year uh, was, was a hit for me and I was still collected just because people were gearing up for the new year. And I started my program January 1st. So that income came in and in um, December. So I started a program while I'm still in the collective. I know some people have difficult time, a difficult time with that. Um, I think, I don't know, I, I lucked out with it. I created it with my best friend in mind because she has a weight problem. So I knew she'd come in. She brought her sister in. So these were people I knew and they also knew it was my first program and I charged half what I charge now. There was that. So I, I then I, I graduate and I'm like, oh, I've already made $14,000 and now I'm gonna <laughs> up my prices because I've gra I'm no longer in the program. So I increased the price of the Mindful Eater program to $1,100. So it's 1100 for the eight weeks. And then my current packages for 2023, which will change in 2024, 3,000 for um, three months. And then just double it, 6,000 for six months and 12,000 for for the year. So yeah, people pay it. Uh, currently, I, I currently have three, pay one six month contract and two uh, three month that I'm running one on ones with. And that's not food related. Those those people are um, one's a massage therapist who wants assistance building her business. And you know what I do? I back end offer my mindful eaters. So this was new. I thought I had this thought, they've already paid you $1,100. Why would you ask them for more, more money? And then I was like, oh my God, Karina, they see what coaching is. You've introduced them to coaching. These aren't healthcare professionals. They're just, pe they're just people. So then this last round in September, I back end offered with a $500 discount on my three month package and one of the five took it. And so, so that's, I've just come up with this, right? And I'm sure in your world, you're probably like, of course you would do that. But my, my brain stopped me from asking for more money from these people. But when they understand the support and like I'm such a believer I feel I, I will probably always have a coach like my coach gets me to the next level 
And I think when when my mindful eaters see like, oh, wow, what it's like to be seen and heard and where that growth and support takes you. So those are my packages. That is my pricing. And that's how I'm I'm running a successful business. And I just it's referral based. So my mindful eaters, you know, will tell other people about I ask them, you know, I say, can you please tell your friends and spread the word, post this on your Facebook? There's no advertising except for uh, referrals. And it all started with me wanting to serve my best friend. Like if I could teach her and support her, how could, how could I do that? And then those five women turned into 10 women, turned into 15 women. And so we'll see where it all goes, but that's, that's how I did it. Well, congratulations to you because this is amazing. And it's, it's cool to hear you talk about this because everything sounds so natural. Everything sounds like it is, you make it sound like it flows and it's easy. And I am I know that it has been very challenging at, at points because starting a business and asking for money and getting out of our heads is a very challenging point of growth that we have to go through when we enter into this world. But you have navigated this beautifully. I love this idea of starting with your best friend in mind. Start with someone in mind, because if you don't know who you're trying to serve and who you are trying to create a program for, then it gets murky, it gets messy, it gets abstract. But when you've got your best friend in mind, then you can make it so much more personal and so much more human. And where there is one person who is struggling with A, B, and C, there are a plethora of human beings struggling with A, B, and C. Because while we are all very unique, we are also all so much the same as humans. And we all need and want essentially the same things. So I think you have just found a a beautiful way to speak that language. Karina, you started with your pro bono clients inside of the course, which is awesome. I think a lot of people think of moving through the practicum in the course or moving through your pro bono work as just like practice one and done, we're checking a box. But what a lot of nurse coaches are starting to realize is that When you take your practicum very seriously and when you are serving and supporting those pro bono clients to your highest degree possible, and and that's just your highest degree possible where you're at, right? Because you are a student and you are learning. But even at that level, you're getting these clients to a place where they have experienced coaching, they understand coaching. And if you are willing to then make that proposal and say, hey, I, I would be happy to keep working with you. Our pro bono sessions are over, but here's how much I charge and I'd love to keep working with you. Very often, those are the very first people to say, I would love to do that. Oh my goodness, yes. Please don't leave me hanging in without coaching now that I've gotten a taste of this. Yeah, and that's what it is. We're leaving them hanging. Uh, if you don't if you don't set up a proposal for your clients and give them the agency to say no, I mean, yes. <laughs> that doesn't feel good. That can't, if you could imagine how that would feel uh, if somebody was supporting you and then all of a sudden was like, thank you, goodbye. Yes. You know, at least give them the agency. I also knew that I wanted to turn this into a business. I knew this was my way out of traditional healthcare. At least I, I hoped, right? That was the thought. So like, let's pull off the Band-Aid and just do it. Ask for money and see what you don't know until you until you ask. And then people say yes. And you're like, okay, this is possible. <laughs> like I remember to this day, even though it's like over half a decade ago, I remember exactly how it felt in my nervous system, in my bones when I made my first proposal to a client. I had gotten off you know, our free introductory session. I had served her really powerfully. It was a great relationship. I felt deeply in my heart like I could help her. And yet one of the things we talked about on our call was she was telling me she was struggling financially. She was telling me she didn't have money to do A, B, and C to take care of herself. So I had this inner narrative running that was like, there's no way that she's going to say yes to pay me money to be her nurse coach. Even though I think she knows we could do good work together, money's just going to be a barrier. And I had this running over and over again, and I'm getting scared, I'm getting sweaty, and I'm shaking. But I had made myself a promise before that first session that I was going to make a proposal if I felt that I could serve this client powerfully, and that I was going to stick to the number that I had written down on the paper in front of me, which, very similar to some of the prices you were throwing out there, was $3,000 for a three-month coaching container. And so... I went through this proposal and I told her, okay, here's what it would look like to work together and how many sessions it would be. And then I was on the phone with her so she couldn't see me. When it got time to say the numbers, I I kid you not, Karina, I just 
picked up my paper and I took a deep breath and I said, okay, and the cost of working together with me as a nurse coach is $3,000 for three months. Like I was such a robot and I scripted it and I read it out, but I got the words out. And you know what she said? She said, wow, that sounds really affordable. <laughs> And I was just like completely mind blown. I think I said something silly like it does. And she said, and she said, well, yeah, I mean, I already feel like I've probably gotten that much insight, that much value for the insight that I've had on this one coaching session with you. So I have no idea what three months of working together will bring, but I have no doubt that it's going to be worth that. So that was my first experience. I think part of it was luck. Part of it was I was really great at what I did. And so it came back to to show me that. But clearly, you have been bold. You have been brave. You have practiced your skill to be able to make these proposals and receive those yeses. And it's an alignment. I mean, a yes is a yes. And a no is a no. And and a not right now is a not right now. And like the acceptance of of that is is just like, okay, you know, and if, yeah, <laughs> Okay, that's great. You would like to work together. We're going to do great work. Okay, now is not the best time for you. Okay, like, you know. Yeah, there's none of there's none of the pushy, there's none of the icky sales tactic, like all of the stuff that I feel that nurses and and new nurse coaches are are kind of afraid of in business is like that ickiness, right? Like, well, how am I going to ask for money? How am I going to sell people? When you do it in this way that is is not focused on the money, but it is focused on serving, supporting, being in alignment, as you said, it flows. It's peaceful. It's easy. It's almost doing a disservice to not ask someone for money and to make that proposal to work together. And then when you get a yes, it's just like that confirmation, confirmation, confirmation over and over again. Yeah. And just to speak to that ickiness, like that was a huge thing for me. Like we don't sell our services. Insurance pays for our service. Nobody shows up to my office and I, you know, I don't build them. They're not paying me. But I'll just say to that, if you don't have it in you to be icky and salesy, you will not come off icky and salesy. That is an experience. Right? That is something you've experienced somewhere along the line with a AC repairman or something. You know what I mean? That is something that you're 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 working through. But but I had that those thoughts, you know, like and and they just aren't true. They just aren't true thoughts. I don't have it in me to be an icky salesperson. So what part of me thought that I was going to be an icky salesperson? I don't know, but it, it's such a common thought. I think for nurses, we are used to providing free free care. So anyways, it's not really free. That's why I'm I'm pausing there. It's not really free at the healthcare system. But we're not, not free, the but... ones. But we're not the ones having those conversations about money, right? It right. all happens yes. on the back end. So, so I think it's natural for nurses that it doesn't feel comfortable at first. But what you are shedding some light on is that when you are authentic, when you are in alignment, it can feel natural. It can feel good to talk about money, to ask for money, to shape your coaching packages in a way that's really going to allow someone to do powerful work and to invest in themselves. It's like giving them the gift of being able to invest in themselves while also letting you earn a really great income so that you can continue showing up every day, being confident, being strong, being empowered and being the best you can for your clients. With freedom. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that's what we're all looking for. So what does freedom look like for you? you're going to be like, well, I didn't know this about you. So I live half my time in Pennsylvania and half my time in San Diego, California. My husband retired from the Navy in December. One of the driving forces also was how can I work in both places? Now I'm, I'm, what's the word, certified in both states. Like I do have my license to practice in California and my license to practice in Pennsylvania, but I never got a job because I'd only be out there certain weeks at, at a time visiting. And um, when he retired, we didn't sell the condo. And I was like, I'd like to be full time in my coaching practice because I can do that from anywhere. So now we'll be go heading back to San Diego in November for the winter and I won't be working my NP job. It is a contract job that I have. So I have I can disappear for two months at a time and come back. So this job allows me the flexibility to live by coastally. I'll, I'll still be doing my mindful little pro program, still be coaching. That's the only thing I do when I'm in California is personal growth. I spend a lot of time at the beach, a lot of time in yoga, and I coach. And then I come back to Pennsylvania and I do my contract job and I coach. So it allows that. I just came back from three weeks in Europe. 
that allows that. It allows me to create my own schedule. And I had just signed two clients in September and I was like, and I'm leaving for September. And my brain was like, Karina, you just signed two pack $3,000 packages with these ladies and you're going to tell them, we'll go ahead and get started in a month. I'm going on vacation. And um, they each had one call before me leaving. We set it up. Everybody was just like happy for me. And today, I, I just got back on Wednesday. What's today? Thir- I just came back yesterday. I had two calls today and nothing but support from my clients. And um, so so that, that and, and, and enjoying, I don't know. I live a much lighter life. That's the thing about being a health and wellness coach is that when you are taking care of your health and wellness and when you're sharing that with your clients, they don't see that as a, oh, Karina's going on vacation and so she's not prioritizing me. They see that as, wow, there's somebody who's prioritizing themselves, their passion, who's doing their self-care. They're going to come back and support me so that maybe I get to be that person who goes on these long vacations and who takes care of myself in that way. I mean, it's it's walking the talk, right? It's role modeling exactly what it is that you're supporting your clients to be able to do. And that's crazy because there was some inner work to do around that, right? Because I thought exactly what you thought, right? right? Now she's showing off. Now she doesn't care, right? I just gave her three grand and she's going on vacation. Nobody thought that. And yeah, you just put it into words what I'm experiencing. And I think the other part of this freedom is that, you know, you're talking about having clients here and having clients there. But at the end of the day, when we look at how you're setting up your practice. It's also not like when you're in the role of a nurse practitioner, in order to have a full practice, you probably need to have a lot of patients lined up, like so many patients and you only get 10, 20 minutes visits with each of them. You got this revolving door kind of circle that's happening. But inside of a nurse coaching practice, I mean, you laid out your pricing structure. So let's look at the longest package. with the 12 month package and that's 12K for the year. Doesn't mean that everybody always starts at 12 months. A lot of people start at three or at six and then they end up re-signing and getting to 12. But let's say we're only looking at the 12 month clients. With your 12 month clients for 12K a year, you need only be working with, serving, supporting, loving on 10 individuals, 10 clients to make well over six figures a year as a nurse coach. I think people forget that having that perspective, it's it's not even difficult to find 10 clients. Like 10 clients will be for you, your referrals, knocking on your door, your word of mouth being like, hey, hello, when can we start working together? So I just think when we can keep that perspective on the financial stability, on how you can now travel and be remote, like, yes, that's freedom that I feel it girl I feel that (laughs) yeah yeah there was a low point as far as income this summer I took I took May off to do some like deep dive inner work like I knew something was bubbling so I was like I'm just gonna pause and then I came back and was like well now I don't have any income from coaching and then I was like whoa whoa who cares like the freedom that I just had to go to the desert and do what I needed to do for my personal growth that is only going to benefit my clients as I help them dig deeper. Like there was a moment of, well now, you know, what about the money? But it was like, that's not what this is about. I needed the freedom and that's what it afforded me. And then the money came, you know, the money was there, the money paused and now the money came. And and so it, it's not for me just about money because I can get paid in freedom. Like that's You know, people are probably thinking like, oh, freedom doesn't pay the bills, but like the money will come. It'll come like just freedom doesn't pay the bills, but freedom does pay your health, your wellness, your your overall well-being, these most incredible dividends. And then when you get that and when you are growing, when you are feeling fulfilled, what happens? You're able to show up differently. You're able to reach out to clients. You're able to make those proposals from that place of alignment and then that's when things start happening. And that's, as you said, that's when the money comes in. And and again, I think you and I are totally on the same page. Success is not all about money, but money is important because money does allow us freedom. So I really, really appreciate you being willing to speak to this in kind of this like nitty gritty way. Talk about the numbers. I know that this is um, going to be really eye opening and really inspiring for a lot of our listeners. Good. I'm happy to. Happy to share it. 
Well, Karina, I cannot appreciate you enough for spending this time with me. Uh, before we wrap things up, is there anything else on your mind or on your heart that you want to share with our community here? I think I would just say if you're feeling called to do it, do it. And what's the it there? Oh, join the collective. <laughs> Join the collective. Yeah, if you're feeling called, if you're feeling called into coaching for whatever reason, nurses are intuitive. We do a lot of work based on intuition. So if there is this part of you that is pulling you in to coaching or to the collective, trust that. Like I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad it 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 supported me in the. Sh- I don't want to say it changed my life. It supported me in the life changes that needed to happen for me. So that that's it. Like if if you're feeling called to it, just just do it. Karina, thank you so much for spending this time with me. I know that your words are going to resonate with and inspire the nurse, the nurse coach, exactly who needs to hear them. They will and they will be moved. And I will talk to you very soon, my friend. Keep us posted on what's next. (laughs) Okay, I will. Thank you, Heather.